Hi guys, it's Kim here and I am joined by the legendary Sigourney Weaver. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's my pleasure. <laughs> um, it's recently been announced that Sigourney is taking part in the Alien Isolation DLC. Um, so we are here to have a little chat about that today. So first off, my first question is, what's the appeal in returning to Ripley and to Alien? Well, I think um, what's wonderful about this game uh, uh, makes it quite different from, from other things I've been approached about. Um, is that it's, it has a lot of substance to it. It has, it's taking inspiration from the first very powerful experience that Ridley Scott put together and using that world and the characters and, and the, the alien to create an experience for the gamer that really puts you on that ship and um, in the future and you know back when we did it. So I was very um, intrigued by the story as as Ripley, you know, the idea that Amanda, the daughter that I never saw again, that she would actually be in space following her mother's footsteps. And in a sense, because it's outer space and it's science fiction, there's a sort of perhaps a chance of some sort of communication. And I was very touched by that. I was surprised by how much that resonated for me, actually. Throughout the Alien movies, um, we saw Ripley grow and change and mature with all the experiences that she took on. What was it like for you returning to the first Ripley, as it was? Well, I, I, I think I underestimated, in a way, the um, connection when I, I sat down in the sound studio and I looked at the text and, and uh, Ripley's voice came out, and I didn't realize how much a part of my DNA she was, that she was sort of lurking in the, in the wings, ready to come out again. Um, and it was, a very, it was a very rich experience for me, spending that day on the game. So I think the game will be, you know, much more than my experience of games, which is limited. It's much more than a sort of shoot 'em up kind of thing. It's, it's much more of a, of a really scary experience. So I know that you saw the game earlier today. What was that like for you seeing yourself in the video game and, and, and back in that universe again? Well, I thought the attention to detail of the world, it's a, it's a very um, real world that Ridley created, but also a very uh, detailed one um, with all of his strange little creatures around, like the, the little bird that goes like this. So I was very... I was very thrilled with sort of the attention to detail, and frankly, I, I, I was stunned by the experience of going through these corridors with my flamethrower and having to make these decisions about which way I was going to go, what was that. It was very visceral, and, um, and the idea that I could actually, you know, use my flamethrower too. So I thought they really put you in there and um, in that world. And then it's up, kind of up to you. And I thought that was really very exciting. Over the course of the four Alien movies, you worked with four different casts and four different sets of characters. Do you have a favorite cast and, and crew? Or you know, what did you think about all of them? You know, I think one of the reasons that the, the series ho holds up well is that they, they always cast wonderful ensembles um, wherever we were. Uh, I just had a reunion with the Aliens cast in Calgary, and that was really cool. And I'd been looking forward to seeing uh, my fellow actors from Alien for the game, which I hope will happen at some point. But, um, you know, I think actors, especially with this kind of film where there are a lot of sort of real special effects, you know, not as opposed to CGI, the actors bring a, a great deal of reality to it. We all feel like we're glad the, the movies kind of hold up, you know? Mm. And as I mentioned earlier, so Ripley changes over the course of the four movies um, quite dramatically. It's which version of Ripley was your favorite one to portray and to perform? You know, I think I would come back to, this, to, to Ripley every few years, knowing that much more and being that much more confident. And so, I think probably the most, the biggest journey Ripley takes is probably in the second film, um, to go from someone found in space to someone alienated in the world to someone who has to go back into space was a, theatrically, I thought, a very interesting arc. But I think I don't really have a favorite. I always think of each director, you know, Ridley and then Jim and then Fincher and then 
Jean-Pierre, they each brought very much a personal touch to it, and it, it really is, if the movies have held up, it's really very much a tribute to them. Mm -hmm. So when I was growing up, you know, cinema to me seemed to be dominated by Schwarzenegger, by Stallone, kind of the mm. big action heroes, and there were very few credible um, female roles. And you know, for me, when I was a young girl, and I saw Alien, probably too young to be watching mm. the movie, it's hard <laughs> but, forever. Yeah, no, quite the opposite. <laughs> um, and you know, here was a strong female character who wasn't, you know, didn't have romantic interest, who wasn't like the stereotypical Hollywood character. Um, and you know she was just a woman getting on with a job and, mm -hmm. and surviving mm -hmm. and for me and your performance of, of Ripley was I thought absolutely fantastic and to me it, you know you and Ripley were a role model to me growing up and I think a lot of young girls mm -hmm. um, growing up were you aware when you filmed Alien um, that of the importance of this and, and, and was there any difficulty in kind of in, in your performance of Ripley you know, I know that the producers wanted the survivor to be a young woman, not out of any feminist statement, but because they thought that would be the last thing people would expect. Mm -hmm. um, but that said, I think because they wrote her so sort of straight and true, regardless of the fact that she was a woman or not, just as this sort of every person <clears throat> who is put in this situation has to make decisions based on really mostly a lack of knowledge, but to go from sort of someone thinking to someone uh, acting instinctively, I think that's the the thing that's so interesting about her. It didn't really, yes, she was a woman, but that wasn't the main thing. And I still think that that's very refreshing. And mm. um, I still think that it's hard for Hollywood to come up with women characters that they just sort of write. And they're not trying to make them every woman, and they're not trying to have them have a little breakdown here and then a love interest here and then, a, you know, to just write a character uh, as that person is still something that's that's difficult for Hollywood to ask for and for writers to come to come up with. But I th hope that things will change because they certainly have so many great actresses ready and waiting to to, as we know from television, perform the most complex parts and women themselves are so strong to me when people say why are you drawn to playing such strong women I'm like women are strong we are the glue that holds the world together you know we run really everything except maybe the major corporations you know you know we're we're in charge of our families and our businesses and our communities and um, you know we have so many qualities patience and fortitude and, and uh, I think lack of sentimentality about so many things, so much strength. Um, and I think we're just beginning to see how that is expressed in the world and in movies. Ooh, amen to that. But I'm glad that it, I'm glad that it was uh, inspiring to you. It means a lot to me. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, thank you. And indeed, thank you for all of your work. And uh, thank you very much for joining me today. It's been a great honor to talk to you. Well, for me too. I hope we do it again. <laughs>